So with adding and subtracting with decimal numbers, we're going to be lining up our decimal points. And uh, let me show you an example of what, uh, what that's going to look like. Say we have 3.91, and we're going to add to that 2.78. Now, the correct way to read that would be 3 and 91 hundredths plus 2 and 78 hundredths. And when we're going to add them, like I said, we're going to line up those decimal points. Notice that there's two decimal places for both numbers, so that's going to make it fairly easy when we're lining it up. We're just going to put one under the other. Now, what we want to look at is the first digit past the decimal point, the 9 on top, the 7 on bottom, those are in the tenths place. Okay, so both of those digits are in the tenths place. And then the second, so the 1 and the 8, those digits are in the hundredths place. Okay? And then, of course, the 3 and the 2, those are in the 1's place. We're in the whole numbers um, over there, so that's a, that's a 1. These are 1's. Now, we can add them together because all of the numbers are in their proper columns. Uh, so we're adding one hundredths plus eight hundredths, that's going to give us nine hundredths. Nine tenths plus seven tenths, that's going to give us sixteen tenths. But similar to um, working with whole numbers, each place value can only hold one digit. So we're going to carry that one into the next column over, which is our ones. So one plus three is four plus two will give us um, 6. So 6 and 69 hundredths is our answer. Let's go ahead and work through a few of these. Let's say we have 9 and 6 tenths plus 3 and 45 hundredths. Notice this is a one digit number, a one decimal digit number and this is a two decimal digit number. But again we want to line up the decimal places. Now it doesn't really matter if you put the nine and six tenths on top or the three and forty five hundredths on top. Uh, we're working with addition. I'll go ahead and just write the nine point six on top or nine and six tenths. Okay, it would look something like that. If you wrote it the other way, it would look like this. Okay. Notice that in this example, we're not starting at the very end. Um, we're not starting over here. Okay, the 6 is not under the 5. And the reason being is because that 6, that first digit past the decimal point, is a tenth. Okay, and a tenth is. Uh, so in this case, it's the last digit, but um, over here in this first one, the, the tenth position is not the last digit. The, the five would be in the hundreds. Okay, so either way it works. I'm going to go ahead and solve it over here. Notice that we don't have a digit in this hundreds place, so you can put a zero as a placeholder and then just add zero plus five is five. 6 plus 4, or 6 tenths plus 4 tenths, is going to be 10 tenths. We're going to carry the 1. 10 tenths is the same as 1. So uh, we're going to put that 1 in the 1's column. We've got 1 plus 9 is 10, plus 3 is 13. Okay, let's do another one. Let's say we've got a string of um, uh, numbers. So two hundredths plus fifty one hundredths plus sixty eight hundredths. Notice they're all two digit decimal numbers, okay? And so we could just put one underneath the other.
OK. And now we're just going to add two hundredths plus one hundredths plus eight hundredths. That's going to give us eleven hundredths. So we're going to carry the, the one here. So now we're deal dealing with tenths. This is one tenth plus five tenths plus six tenths. That's going to give us twelve tenths. And I'm going to carry the one, bring that down. Now, I do need to bring down that decimal number. So I've got one and twenty-one hundredths. Let's do one more addition problem before we move on to subtraction. In this problem, we're going, I'll, I'll go ahead and, uh, well, let me line it up, or I'll write it out. 27 and 954 thousandths plus 13 and 89 hundredths plus 10 and 7 tenths. Now notice that our first number has three decimal places tenths, hundredths, thousandths. This one goes out to hundredths, and the third one it goes to tenths. The key thing is to line up our decimals. So if I write my first number here, notice the decimal point is here, so I need to make sure the 13 is right under the 27, and then I've got the 89. And then the last one, 10 and 7 tenths. Okay, so the 9 and the 8 and the 7, those are all tenths. These are hundredths. And then the last digit in this first number is in thousandths. Notice we don't have any thousandths in the other two numbers, and we don't have a hundredths here. So you can use a zero as a placeholder. That just makes it visually easier to do the math. Four thousandths is going to be brought down. Five hundredths plus nine hundredths is going to be fourteen hundredths. Carry the one. One tenth plus nine tenth plus eight tenth plus seven tenths. So that's ten. Uh, Twenty-five. 25 tenths, so we're going to carry that 2 into the 1's. <coughs> We've got 2 plus 7 plus 3, so that's 12. And that's going to be 3, 4, 5. 52 and 544 thousandths. That's going to be your answer. Okay, let's do a little bit of subtraction. Now it's kind of the same deal. We're going to line up our decimal points and then just subtract. So let's do a couple and I'll show I'll give you a trickier one here in a minute. But here we have 18 and 73 hundredths minus 4 and 19 hundredths. So we're going to rewrite that vertically, so it's a little easier to do the math. Okay, notice that the decimal points are lining up. This is my tenths column, and then this last one is my hundredths column. Okay, now I'm subtracting. Now it looks like I have to borrow, so um, instead of having three hundredths here, I'm going to have thirteen hundredths. So 13 hundredths minus 9 hundredths is going to give me 4 hundredths remaining. So I went from 7 tenths to 6 tenths. So 6 tenths minus 1 tenth is going to be 5 tenths. Bring down the decimal and then subtract and I'm going to have 14 left over. So 14 and 54 hundredths is going to be your answer. Now let's look at um, Let's look at one another one like that. 29 and 381 thousandths minus 15 and 52 hundredths. Notice this is a uh, three, de three decimal number, 
goes out to the thousands, and this one is a two decimal number, it goes out to the hundreds. But again, we want to line up those decimal points. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite that. Okay, notice I do not have a digit underneath the one in the thousands place, so I could put a zero there. And so, if, you know, if it helps, you could, you know, draw your columns. This is the tenths, this is the hundredths, this is the thousands. So one thousandths minus, or take away nothing or zero, is going to be one thousandths. Eight hundredths, take away two hundredths, will give us six hundredths. Three tenths, take away five tenths, well we need to borrow, so instead of uh, three tenths, we're now going to have thirteen tenths, kind of similar to that problem there. So 13 tenths take away 5 tenths is going to give you 8 tenths remaining. And now we have 8 minus 5 is 3, and then 2 minus 1 is 1. So 13 and 861 thousandths. <coughs> Let's do two more problems. Here, in this one, in both of these, I'm going to have a whole number. Well, let's, let's do this one with the whole number, and I'll fix the other one. So 7 take away 3 and 45 hundredths. Now, notice there's no decimal point in this first digit. But we can assume that the decimal point is going to be after the 7. Okay, so you just, just go ahead and write out your number 7 with a decimal point. And then let's go ahead and write the one underneath. So that's going to be 3 and 45 hundredths. And we're going to subtract. Now, we do need to put some zeros here because we're going to be borrowing from the columns to the left. So, you know, in the case above, we we, it wasn't a necessity that we had a zero here. It's, it just makes it easier to have one. You could have just brought the number down. Uh, but in this case, we want to have some zeros as place values because we need to do some borrowing. So basically, we're going to be looking at the digit to the left. <coughs> Excuse me can't borrow here, so we need to borrow here in our ones column. So I'm going to take one away, and I'm left with six ones. And I'm going to make that one into ten tenths. Okay. Now I can borrow a tenth. So now I'm left with nine tenths. And, and that one tenth will give me ten hundredths. Now I can take five from ten and 9 take away 4 is going to give me 5 tenths, and then I've got 3. So 3 and 55 hundredths. Let's do one more, and I'm, I'm going to change this one up. Let's say we have 13.2 minus 6.812. So 13 and 2 tenths minus 6 and 812 thousandths. So I'm going to write that, 13 and 2, two tenths, and then 6 and 812 thousandths. Oops. Again, I want to use some zeros because I'm going to be taking away from that em that you know that space. <coughs> I need to borrow from the number over. It looks like I'm going to have to borrow from the tenths column. Now, that one tenth that I'm taking is going to make this ten hundredths. So I need to borrow from the ten hundredths. Now I've got ten thousandths. So ten take away two is eight. 
Nine hundredths take away one hundredth is eight hundredths. Looks like I need to borrow here from the one. So now I've got two ones and that that is going to make this eleven tenths. So eleven take away eight is three. Looks like I need to borrow. So twelve take away six is going to be six. Six and three hundred eighty-eight thousands.